Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be showing you how I normally prepare a study schedule or plan from scratch. I've been using this method since my school days and it has worked well for me, especially if I'm working on a tight timeline before an exam. In this video, I'm actually preparing for my topic exams or the test of proficiency in Korean that will be in October later this year. Nonetheless, this method can be applied to any exam that you may be studying for. Hopefully, you guys find this helpful in getting you back on track with your exam prep. If you're studying for the topic exams too, do consider subscribing to follow me on my Korean self-study journey where I attempt to achieve the highest level in the Korean language proficiency test through 100% self-studying. Let's get started! Number 1. Setting up a calendar So the first thing I always do is to establish the time frame I have for my study journey. I'll start by counting the number of days or weeks I have from the test date to the present date. The next topic exam will be happening in October, but since the official dates have not been released yet, I'll be using a tentative date, which is 17 October, to work with first. So I'll search up a calendar template to use and copy the relevant months or weeks into a separate spreadsheet. You don't have to use a digital calendar or spreadsheet if you don't want to. When I used to do this during my school days, I'd draw by hand and write everything down on paper, and it still worked well for me. Beside the calendar, I'd include an additional column with the countdown, or i.e. the number of days left till the exam. This really helps me keep on track because I'll have no reason to forget how little time I have before the exam. To do this, I just Google for a free online counter that will generate the number of days to your date of choice. And yup, with that, your study calendar is more or less done. Number 2. Listing all the study materials down. Moving on to the next part, which is listing all your study material down. To do this, I'd go through all the material that I have in order to prepare for the test. Then, I'd list it down into two columns. Number one, the material that I have to complete, and number two, material that will be good to complete if I have the time. Here, I open another tab in my spreadsheet to list this down, but you can write it on a piece of paper too. I started by listing down the books I have and any additional remarks that will help me in prioritizing the study material. This is just a broad overview of the resources that I have and it also helps to categorize the resources based on the different components of the test that I have to prepare for. For the topic 2 exams, there are three main components to prepare for. Listening, writing and grammar slash reading. So based on my plan, I identified six books that I definitely wanted to cover to tackle each component. There are books that will help in my overall preparation, such as the Korean Grammar in Use, Intermediate and Advanced, but also more targeted books to help me in specific components of the test. In this case, it is the writing component that I'm least confident in, so I have two books on this topic. I have another video introducing the books that I am using for the Topic 2 exams, so do check it out if you're interested. I'll link the video in the description box below. After I'm done sorting the material, I moved on to listing the number of chapters down in each book or material. If a chapter is exceptionally long, it's good to indicate there as well so that you can keep track more accurately of everything you need to cover and the time that you might need for it. After I'm done with that, I'd format it into a checklist style so that I can tick off the chapters I've completed. This is definitely not compulsory, but since there is quite a lot to cover and work also keeps me really busy, being able to tick off chapters after I've completed will keep me on track. It also gives me an additional sense of achievement because I like the feeling that I'm one step closer to my goals. It might take some time to go through all your books and listing the chapters down one by one, but I highly recommend it because it really does make a difference in your planning. Once you're done with that, we'll move on to the next step, the actual study plan.
Number three, planning the calendar. When you're done listing out everything you have to cover, we can now move on to the final step, which is planning the study calendar. So using the calendar you've charted out in step one, work backwards and plot in the chapters you plan to cover for each week. This will give you a very realistic feel of how much you need to cover based on the time you have left before the test and the material that you need to work through. In your calendar, be sure to add in an additional column so that you can indicate whether you are available that week or not. For example, if you know that you have a certain family event, work commitment, or perhaps you already have something planned out that week. So you'll know that you have to schedule less work for yourself that week. Be sure to plan out for rest days as well so that you can take some time off to digest what you've studied. And in my experience, I'm always less motivated to study if I overload my study plan. So make sure that you plan it out as realistically as you can, so that you'll stay motivated. Also, if you're a visual person, feel free to use different colours to mark out the months, weeks or even days on your study plan. I like to colour block by month, given that I have a work schedule to coordinate with and my campaigns are usually monthly. So it usually just makes a lot of sense for me to plan out my time that way. Another thing to note is that you don't have to plan everything out at once. It's completely understandable if you don't know how busy you're going to be in the next few months. So just like what I'm doing here, I'm leaving the dates blank with an additional space for me to write in my plan as I go. And finally, when everything is done, I'll print out a copy so that I can physically tick off the checklist. This is optional, but personally, I like having a physical copy so that I can write on it. So here, you see me printing it off on rough paper. And fun fact, I used to stick the countdown calendar on the wall beside my bed, especially when I'm nearing the test date to scare myself into action. And it really does help remind me not to slack off, but I don't think I'll be doing it this time, or at least I hope not. This list is not complete, but it's enough to get me started with my exam prep. It's completely fine to start with a basic plan and then slowly build up along the way as you find more resources, gain momentum in your studying, or if you need to adjust the difficulty of the resources that you're using. So there you have it. I hope you found this helpful. And if you are preparing for the topic two exams, let me know how you're coping with it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.